All right, Shelly here, and I want to show you such a delicious recipe. I hope you try it. It's called braised chicken. There it is. It's in from one of our Seasons Fest. It's also available on our website, just under recipes, search braised chicken. So what I'm going to do is um, start with the start at the beginning and I'm going to sub in uh, some ham and I'm going to brown it up rather than bacon and um, so we're going to start this I'm making it in the Dutch oven the enameled Dutch oven which is a six quart piece and it um, um, it works on my induction burner so if you have an induction cooktop if you're looking at it this is a type of cookware that will work beautifully on there and it can go in the oven but this recipe is kind of like Coco Bay. If you've not had it, um, it's so delicious. And the bacon and the fat, you know, all that, you know, and then the wine and oh my word, it's so good. So I'll watch and um, I'll show you what I'm doing. Now, one of the things I recognize is that um, the bacon would normally have, it calls for four slices of bacon. It would normally have fat in it and um, so this ham has a little bit of fat in it, so I won't bother cutting that off. Um, but I'll also add a little bit more um, fat from my chicken stock because I was lucky enough to have some farm chicken stock and there's quite a bit of fat on it. And um, it is the, makes the best uh, fat for frying and I love it. Okay, so sorry, this is a bit sketchy. I'm cubing this. Um, and just gonna fry it up. So this, I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. I'll apologize if you can't. So um, I'm just preheating the pan. There's, you know what, there's good chunks of fat on here. So um, I'm not worried about my cutting board and then I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna cut leeks on it afterwards because the ham is cooked anyways. This is just um, like lunch meat ham that is whole. I buy it at Costco, it's really yummy. And it's a good sub in. Bacon is always just a little bit better, so use bacon if you have it. And of course, you can always add more bacon if you want. All right, um, so to this, to my pan, I'm gonna put a little fat in here, and this, again, is just fat that I skimmed off of my um, chicken stock, so. And just dry this in. We just need to brown it up quickly. And then we're gonna take it out of the pan and we're gonna continue on. And then we're gonna make the sauce and it's gonna cook itself. So I do recommend that you try this as a recipe that you make on a weeknight or even on a weekend. Um, the only thing, we'll just go over the ingredients quickly so that you know whether you have them um, on hand. So if you can, get leaks. So you've not cooked with leek before. This is what a leek looks like. This is a large one. And what you're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna move this to the side just a little bit. What you're gonna wanna do is cut off the root end. There you go. And then you're going to wanna cut off the dark green. So um, this chunk really is not usable. It's really almost, it's not quite woody, but um, almost. So now here's one of the things because leeks have to be like a, like they're, uh, they grow in the ground and the part that's above the earth is green and that's the part you can't use. So what you want to do is mound up the earth, which means that you're going to get earth in little layers. So it's layers kind of like a long, narrow onion, um, but you're going to need to just check and see if there's dirt in there, like earth from the dirt. So all you wanna do is wash that out. One of the ways you can do it is cut it in advance and then rinse it. So I think that might be, I'm gonna wash this just because it's obvious. And it's hard not to. Um, and because it's a round vegetable, you're gonna slice it, cut it, and then put the cut side down. Again, you'll see in here, this is another time that you could just go through and watch it. I might do that actually. So you can see in here just the dirt, okay? 
So bear with me one second. Oh, this is going fast. So this is browning really nicely. You can see there's browning. It's the pan is actually browning, and that's a good thing. We don't want to burn it, but we don't want to split it. Okay, hold on one second, and then we'll carry on. Okay. Like I said, you can slice it in again, and then just wash the pieces if you want. There you go. Okay, lay them down. So if you're doing carrots, always cut a slab off your carrots, and then um, put it cut side down so that it doesn't roll around and get a surprise. Okay, the other thing is, remember when you're using a chef's knife to choke up on the blade, our, our beautiful knives have a, a logo right there on the shaft of the knife to remind you where to put your thumb and your forefinger and then your other three fingers wrap around the handle and that's called choking up. So I better be careful. I'm going to use good form here. There we go. I didn't exactly use good form. There you go. So three fingers here, thumb, first finger, and then you choked up on it. It's very different. Okay. I'm going to turn this off and we'll pull this out. I should use a different utensil for this. This is a bit painstaking. Um, I love these little mix and scrapers because they scrape, they uh, stir, like the sort of like a spoon. I think they might be called like a spinula, um, but they're also high heat. So you can use them in any kind of pan and cook with them all day long and never damage your pan and never damage your uh, mix and scraper either. So you notice that quieted down right away. That's, I guess, one of the benefits of induction cooktops. You can see that my ham is all browned up and steaming. Let me just check, dry my, Okay, so what we're gonna do is put a little bit more fat back in here because again, I didn't use bacon, so I don't have it. This is, pan is not swimming in fat. So, and I'm gonna put it back on again. Turn it down a little bit. And now we're going to add the chicken and brown it. And this really is the secret of this. Now, here's one thing I learned. Uh, so the recipe says to put the lemon pepper rub on here. And if you forget, you will regret it because what the lemon pepper rub does is it helps it brown. And you have a set of tongs here. So I don't have to touch the chicken. And I'm going to put this in here and let it start to brown. One tip we have for you always is when you're cooking meat, put what we call the presentation side down first. It will look nicer when you're done. So that would be like the skin side down on a chicken thigh here. And if you need to um, do it in a couple batches, you can. I'll just wait for this to cook a little bit before I put those last two in. All I'm looking to do at this point is brown this, okay? and uh, overcrowding it will cause it to sweat instead of brown. We don't want that. All right, so what I have ready is some chicken stock, a cup, and a half a cup of white wine. So here, I also have some garlic at the ready, some Dijon mustard, butter, and flour, and that is it. Um, I do also have some greens to put in on the end, but you know, you can use spinach. I'm using baby kale today. It just seems a little nicer in the grocery store. And while we're waiting for this to brown, we have our leaf spring. What I'm gonna do is show you how I do potatoes, mashed potatoes, really quickly and really easily on a leaf knife. So I just wash my potatoes and you know, a lot of the nutrition is in the skin. And if your family does not like to have uh, skin on the potatoes, then peel them. Um, 
I just go ahead and do it anyways. And on a special occasion, I'll feel them to make my family happy if that's what makes them happy. Um, but otherwise, we just match this skin right in there. And it's not as, you know, smooth maybe, but it's got more nutrition in it, so I think that's just my my excuse is that I didn't have time. But my reason is actually to make it a bit healthier. And to save me time actually also. Alright, so that's almost brown. So I'm putting this in the multi cooker and I need a cup of water, which I believe I did not get. No, I did not. So the reason I do this is because it does such a great job. It is completely hands-free. It uses one plug. I don't have to babysit it. And this pot goes in the dishwasher. So let me just put one cup of water in the pot. That's it. I'll put it in here. Add some salt. And forget about our mashed potatoes. And then we'll just drain it and put it in. Turn the burner on, turn the uh, multi cooker on. So I use custom. I just change the time to six, uh, I'll do eight minutes. And press and stir. And that's it. Super easy. Okay, this needs to be turned. So just be careful, you can see how nice and brown this is. That's what we're looking for. And that's why you want to make sure you use the rub on it. If it's not ready to come off, don't force it. <laughs> there we go. Very nice. I ripped the skin off of that one. I'm just looking to brown this. We'll put the other two in. Because we're going to simmer it in the sauce, and that's going to finish cooking the meat. And you can do whatever else you're going to do. So, yeah, it's so easy. Okay, let's just double check everything. So, Reduce the heat to medium. Okay, yeah. There we go. Garlic. I'm going to get my garlic ready. Okay. So I'll use the garlic press. If you haven't seen our garlic press. Oh! Where's the cleaning tool? Oh, here it is. It fell out. So the little cleaning tool looks like a dull press. There's a storage spot, so the little ridge goes right on there, and it stores in the handle. Always. Oh. Sorry, the stem of uh, time in there. All right, so because this one is so big, I'm gonna cut it in half, but you do not have to peel the clothes. So when you push down, it saves a little gap for the skin. So you probably don't even want to peel the clothes. Look at this. It's the time of year where it's so brittle, it's actually, falling off. I can't, I can't even deal with this. Okay. I'm going to put it right onto my leaf and press it all out and then out comes the little skin bit. The end is a little bit icky so I'll take that out. I might cut the end off. Yeah. It's springtime right now when I'm recording this, and so the, everything is wanting to sprout. Okay, that is almost. There we go. So again, I use this little end to scrape it off. And then get any other meat, to the meat out, and then scrape. There's like a little claw on the end, and you can scrape all of the gunk out, and if anything's stuck in there, um, you can use the little bristles. I'm not done though, I need to do a couple more. It said four cloves. That one was probably worth two. We'll put 
put another one in. There we go. So it's just so easy and it gets like, with only the paper left in here. It's so nice to use. I don't recommend you put it in a dishwasher because it is, it'll kind of make it look yucky much before it needs to. I hope you can hear me. This is sizzling away and I really used to pay attention. Okay, I'm going to turn this down. I'm, bur I'm close to burning this. Okay, so my garlic is really sticky. Sticky, sticky, which is a good sign. That means it's really yummy garlic. And again, I'll just use, yeah, all the paper is just stuck to me. I'll use this to push out any last woody simmons and that will clean right up. There we go. I better stop touching this and wash my hands. Okay. At this point, my chicken is browning beautifully. And now I'm going to add the leaf. There we go. Okay, get all the paper off there. Let me just read. I'm going to read the batches. Skin side down, five minutes. Flip and cook an additional minute. Uh, if you, you don't want a whole bunch of fat in there, add the leaf and cook for a minute. Add the garlic and cook till fragrant. I mix mine. Mine are going in at the same time. There we go. Slide that right in there. So the prep work is just about done. Let's just spread this around. Mm. Yum. Oh, people can only just smell this right now. Super fragrant. Okay, so I'm gonna get my the rest of my stuff ready. Uh, this is a brand new can. Here we go. That's cool. Okay, paying attention. Leeks, a minute. Garlic, 30 seconds. Add the wine and cook until reduced. Mm. I'm going to stir this around. You can see there's like all this brownness on the bottom of the pan. My chicken is brown. Super fragrant. Technically, what we're looking for is to get the flavor of the leek and the garlic going into the remaining fat because fat is a flavor conductor. So it's via the fat that all the, it, the flavor goes into it and then it spreads everywhere. That's why we wanted to do that. And now we're gonna deglaze and go quiet with our wine. I'll turn this up just a tad. So now, mm, smells so good. I'm gonna start scraping the bits off the bottom. Again, I'm not damaging anything with this thing. It'll just sneak in there. Ugh. Okay, so there's, can you see? Not really. So uh, you can sort of see, there's some liquid there in the bottom. It's boiling right now and it's brown from all of the yumminess that's where a lot of the flavor of this recipe comes from is just how beautifully that brown which is why this pan um, is recommended for this recipe okay add the butter and the mustard is next so until reduced so now i need three tablespoons of butter the mustard oh it's so good this recipe is just so good. One, two, three. That is my guess on three tablespoons. I need one tablespoon of mustard. 
Here we go. At the ready. And then we're just waiting for it to reduce a moment. But the other thing I forgot to mention, I have some fresh thyme. Actually, I have dried thyme. So it is sprigs that are dried, so they're still fragrant, they're still good, but they look a little tired. So I'm putting more than it asks for. Um, but if you can go to your garden and get some, or you got some at the grocery store, it's softer and brighter. Um, okay, has this been three minutes that I've been chit-chatting with you? Okay, so this is reducing when I, mm, that's our gravy and, oh my word, this smells so good. Ah, okay. Add the butter and the mustard. We'll just scrape any little last bits out of there. I'm gonna stir this in. So both of these are gonna help thicken, actually, or emulsify, but our, our um, Flour also, uh, it's gonna make the, the flour go in nicely, I think, so that it doesn't clump. <laughs> All right, butter, mustard. Once the butter is melted, stir in the flour. Two tablespoons of flour right in there. So I wouldn't make this on like a crazy, I'm nutty, uh, stressy week night. But you can see how fast this was. Um, and it cooks on the stove top, so it's almost done. And it's a pretty nice meal for a weeknight. Okay, butter, mustard, once the butter, stir in the flour, add the stock. Here we go. One cup of chicken stock. I'm supposed to add salt, I forgot salt. Where's the salt? It doesn't say salt. No, it doesn't say salt. Stock bacon and thyme, Shelly. I can't read. I think I read. Don't ask me. I won't even think. Okay, here's my bacon. I'm gonna put the fat in here too, because why not? It's kind of gone quiet. It's kind of like when you're eating dinner and it's so good and everybody goes quiet. You know that time? always a good sign can you see oh my i'm gonna put my you can see my dried thyme we're just gonna stick that right in there it's actually gonna come out whole afterwards hopefully i want you to see what this looks like a little closer up you can see my beautiful gravy okay so now we're just gonna let this simmer with the lid on for about 13 to 15 minutes, it says. So I'm just immersing my thyme in there. It smells divine, okay? <sighs> Amazing. Okay, so in 15 minutes, dinner's ready to serve. So what I'll do at the very end is I'll grab a couple of cups or handfuls of my dried spinach, or in my case, baby kale, and I'll put it in there and it will wilt really quickly. As you turn it and just fold it in, it looks like a lot at the beginning, but it really disappears into you know nowhere. And it ends up looking exactly like this picture. Um, and then you'll serve it on your mashed potatoes, the gravy, and it's dinner for four um, or five, depending on how big eaters you have. Um, that easily. So uh, I hope I hope you try it. So delicious. I'll post pictures too. Thank you for watching.